Hey there. Solving word problems. Some people get can get really turned around by this, and I have my hand up high because I have been one of those people. Uh, I want us to talk about two ways to think about um, solutions to word problems, or the equations we might use. One is a situation equation. A lot of times this equation really just shows us kind of how the information in the problem is structured. It tells the story in, in a mathematical way um, without all those words. The solution equation may be similar or it may be very different. Ultimately the solution equation however is the workhorse. That's the one you use to get her done and answer the question. If this all sounds kind of weird to you, let's look at a few examples, and, and that may uh, clear it up a little bit. So oh, already I see my one of many typos, I'm sure. Ooh, let's pretend it's not there. In a collection of 3,145 coins, 497 are pennies. How many coins are not pennies? Okay, well, if 497 are pennies, the rest must not be pennies. So here's my situation. I have 3,145 coins, and if I take out the 497, I'll be able to find the, the number of coins that aren't pennies. Now in a situation equation, I might just use a variable to represent that number. A lot of times in algebra we see x or n, so I'm just going to stick x right in there. Now the solution equation in this case is very much the same, the same thing. I'm going to have 3,145 and I'm going to take away 497 and I can write that in the fancy little horizontal way or I can write it in the vertical way which is really how I'm going to get things done here today. Uh, and I get to have some fun here with grouping and ungrouping. Good times. I know, I know what you're thinking. That's, those are good times. And then we can get down to business. And in the solution equation, instead of an x, we're certainly going to have our 2,648. 2,648 what? Pairs of stinky gym socks? No. Coins. Will work. You could say coins that aren't pennies as well if you want to be super specific. Specificity is always a good idea. So that, you might be thinking, so there's no difference between situation equations and solution equations, right? Wait, wait. Back up the trousers. Let's look at a different situation. So Bob took $1,250 out of his savings account, and now he has $3,482 left in the account. How much was in Bob's account to start? Now, the situation equation tells us the story here. It paints the picture in a strictly mathematical terms. And in this case, the picture is going to be Bob had some amount of money. He took out 1250 and he had 3482 left. So that's our situation. So again, I'm going to use a variable, an algebraic expression, n, to represent what he started with. Then he took out $1,250 and he was left $3,482. And of course what we want to solve for is n. So that's the situation that Bob finds himself in. Now, that that's fine, but that's not very helpful if we're really trying to find that solution. Now that tells our story. How do we solve? Well, we take 
what's left, and we add what was taken out, we, we work backwards. See, now this is, this. so this is going to look different. That means that we take what's left in the account after we add what he took out of the account, and here we're going to find a solution. And again, as nice as the horizontal equations are, it is the vertical that do the work, at least for me. I group below, so don't panic if that's new to you. And what I'm seeing is that Bob started with $4,732 in his savings account. Um, on the situation side, I might say N equals 4,732. And that's all good. Um, so here we do see something different. This equation looks quite different from the solution equation. And that's okay. Both equations are useful to us. One describes the situation. One paints the picture of what's happening. The other one's what we actually have to do to answer a question. Sometimes they are virtually the same. Sometimes they are inverse operations like we see here. Let's look at one last situation and see if we can, uh, when you read this one, I want you to pause and see if you can, if you haven't done this already, see if you can write out a situation equation you think would make sense um, and, and then play ahead and see if we agree. So there are some people at the Arts and Crafts Fair, and then 347 people went home. Now 498 people are left at the fair. How many people were at the fair to start? This sounds a lot like Bob's bank situation, because we're going back to the beginning. So let's think about the situation, and we can really kind of read it out sentence by sentence. There were some people at the Arts and Crafts Fair. It doesn't tell us how many. That's what we're going to figure out eventually. But some people, we'll, we can use S as a variable for some people. We don't know. Then, out of, out of that number, whatever it is, 347 of those people went home. So if they went home, we'll take them away. They're gone. And now, 498 are left. Did you notice how... I, I went sentence by sentence to kind of, for the situation equation, to think about, okay, what's going on here? I was even picturing it in my head. I was picturing an arts and crafts fair. There you go. Um, and that helps me kind of get a sense of that situation equation. Now, when I look at it, I think, well, that would be kind of hard to sit and guess and check to figure out what S is equal to. So I need a solution equation. And this is the kind of problem where we work backwards. If we want to know what hap um, who, who was there at the start, we're going to take who we had at the end, and we're going to want to add whoever left. And again, one last time, here's me working vertically. And it looks like there were 845 people at the start of the Arts and Crafts Fair. Um, on the situation side, that would mean S equals 845, right? Um, again, sometimes that situation equation looks very similar, but sometimes it can look quite different. Both do a job of helping us understand the math involved and come to a solution. Take your time. Keep working at it. You'll get there.